Well, right. thanks for inviting me to talk to you uh, about the show. It's fun. Um, Thank you for coming. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about, I, I think we'll talk about the, uh, the, the pastels and the mixed media works separately and then about the, the sculptures. Um, and kind of, I think I'll start with the pastels. <laughs> now, in your uh, artist statement and your biography, you kind of list uh, all the usual suspects as being your mentors or influences, Edward Moore, Papa Picasso, and Bob. Yeah. But to me, as a critic, what I see is a profound localism. I see in your works a lot of people that I remember from, from 30, 40, <laughs> did I say 50 years back, more. Um, and, and it, it's quite fascinating, you know, I can see a touch of Blackman, I can see uh, a bit of early Bill Robinson speaking no, through, all right? Uh, talk talk about, about those times and some of the fantastic people, you know, I mean, he's really giants in Brisbane, and when I remember as a kid, well, I wasn't, even when I was already, you know, parts being a kid, there were just perhaps a dozen strong personalities who were the artists in the whole of Brisbane. Yeah. Well, probably, probably in Queensland. Actually. Yeah. Uh, I think I think John Mulvey was probably the key man. Yeah. yeah. I, I used to go to his live classes. And then the young man, twenty-one. Yeah. You must get over the shock of seeing Ben Nichols. Yeah, pubic hair. I mean, he was a great teacher. Um, he was a very, very uh, definite teacher. You know, did it his way. All the time, the door, take a lot of wine. I think it was ten bucks. Three hours. Right. And uh, he used to have an interim halfway through the, the drawing class for about half an hour while he got close in person to the model, just so they had some of the yeah. action. And then he'd come back and he'd work our last for the next hour or so, hour or so. And come to a drawing was something that he was very, very concerned about. And he would into you know, you know, the real contour drawing, the real to lose the trick, don't look. And if you look down, he belt you over the ears. And he was only a small black, but he had hard. Yeah. So I learned to draw a bit. Um, not, not just drawing, like an apple to look like an apple, but the interpretation of drawing was all of that. And I guess that was the main influence. Apart from Margaret Olley, who started in his career. And I'll tell you the story, because I've told a few people. And I was a little boy, just during the war, 1944, perhaps, up in Cairns. And one morning I walked downstairs out to the dining room, we playing at the stage at my friend's place, and there was an incident with the drawing of a big bowl of flowers, and the bowl of flowers was right there, and on the floor. This is 1944, 45, and I'd never seen anything like it in my life. This is before movies, I mean, it was just incredible. And I went up to have a look at it very closely, and this stentorian voice came from this very tall, fabulous lady long white gown in the doorway she said get away from there you little bastard don't you touch that <laughs> and I was hooked yeah. and I was hooked yeah. so that was where I started I mean I didn't know at the time but I was so impressed with the ability from there to there that, that I just stung me and I guess uh, the drawing started and just got going yeah. I, I wasn't fortunate enough to go to Mulvey's class I was just no, before my there. time but I went to St Mary's when Roy Churchill was there. Oh, right. Well, similar thing. Yeah. Uh, and I know Roy Churchill had huge fights with Mulvey, didn't you? They had absolute uh, disastrous fights. I mean, they had knocked down pipe throwing, beer can throwing, and he's this big black in his back, this little fella. Like they really hated these other Because I think, and, and this is no disrespect to Roy, Roy was a very good painter. Mm. 
but he was a continuously evolving painter. He was Mob, he was a true artist, and that was the difference. Mm -hmm. Delacy was there on Roy's part, but he didn't show it. But Mob did near that. Yeah. And it was quite evident in the work. Roy was always with the trim type, and very good. I mean, I'm not yeah. putting it down. Yeah. But uh, Molly was the true originator of his own style. That was yeah. his really yeah. expressions. But he, he was he was the best teacher. Uh, talking about that, I see um, a, a great deal of originality in your sculptural pieces. Fun more so than as well. Cool. And um, because I mean they, they bowl me over. But it's it's quite interesting that. Despite being such original pieces, they also have the tradition of ceramics in them that yeah. you can read back. Well, yeah. to me. I taught ceramics yeah. for 20 years at KUT, and I had to find ways in which you could um, compromise with the facility. I mean, when teachers graduated, artists graduated, they had to teach 3D and ceramics was a course. And initially, the ceramics course was to teach student teachers to throw a pot. Mm -hmm. It takes a year at least to fill up the bloody thing, the clay. Yeah. And after this frustration, when they get out of school, they've got one wheel, one three cubic foot kiln, and 300 students. Mm -hmm. That's ridiculous, you can't do it. So I had to devise ways of overcoming that problem. So, so we did, uh, so just we use clay, but we use clay in a more creative, artistic way. And, and I remember Bill Robinson saying for a few years back, and he's a hero, he's a midwife from somewhere, probably a man, and he said, are you still making pots? Well, and I said, I'm trying to do it, because he knew exactly what we were saying to each other. And yeah. um, Bill actually uh, fired some of his first things in the kiln at Colgan Road. He made some of his goats, he gave up goats, so I fired his goats for him. He started those things, um, Way back, and I was already drawing on clay way back in the 60s before I was. But before he started doing chooks, <laughs> he had gates. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, because I remember sort of before that he was kind of like a colourist. He did a lot of pastels, didn't he? Well, he was very influenced by, by the Impressionists. Yeah. Was Bonard and Matisse kind of. Well, well, Bill was a very smart black. I mean, he went through a number of. Uh, styles yeah. where the influence was, came in his work. And, and then he pretended to be a simple farmer. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that's what he started being awesome. Yeah. Was that why he used his influence? <laughs> I, 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 I think it might have been. I remember just having a glass of wine with Bill one time over at uh, Peru. Had a lovely old house yeah. there. They had several kids, three dogs, and we were having a glass of wine. And he said, you know, surely you want to sit out here off the lunch and just spoil the, the artwork in Brisbane. He because he knew then where he was going to be. Surely recorded everything we made. Mm -hmm. you know, she had, she had uh, cases full of stuff that was all filed, all, everything was perfectly uh, recorded. Because they knew then. And this is, I'm going back to the 80s. I mm was -hmm. still teaching high school, so it must have been before that. It was probably in the late 60s. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, we did this thing when, when I was teaching at Camp Hill um, of having an art, probably one of the first student art shows at the local shopping centre. We raised about $1,500 or something. It's a lot of money back in the 60s. And I said, What are we going to do this? I said, well, We're going to start an art fund, an art practice fund. So I took the money and I bought three Bill Robinson paintings for $1,500. I hope that's still worth it. They're all worth a lot of money now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was how we got, but Bill taught me to teach to him. He's five years old when we built it. Right. When we were doing our certificate of art, Bill was teaching color stuff. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. yeah. so, so I knew him then and then we kept in contact and I wound up teaching him. Yeah. Now, I even see a kind of a, a sense of silks within your terms. Yeah. Did you work with Merv Neely at all? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Actually, Merv Neely was. I mean, that, that to me sort of reminds me of. Sort of Cellini salt cellar or something, or some of these, yeah. these dripping kind of metallic well, the like that, yeah. I like the steps. I mean, I mean, I'm a painter, really. I train as a painter, so uh, the whole thing about this is that the, the sculpture still has that, what it's made of, probably about, but it's like painting, you put layers and layers and layers on. 
No, 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 And in my year, there were eight of us, except for eight of us. So, Merv was my big, I suppose, uh, mentor. So it was Merv that really pushed me into getting a scholarship to go to the for two years. And that's how I got to know. I mean, we used to go over and sit in the party class. Things like that. It kind of happened, remained in the past, even though you've got this reference to it. Because to me, some of these things are also sort of reminiscent of a Rauschenberg assemblage or something. Um, oh, yeah. So you've, you've kind of responded to the various changes that happened after the 60s. Yeah. Well, if you've got to keep coming in, an artist's job, uh, I'm an educator. Training an educator, and I think art is education. Yeah. That's what you try to do, you try to teach people. Uh, to be aware of the other part of life's about, not just, not just business. You know, the aesthetic part of life is very important for your totality as a human being. And what has been, the Renaissance is a good example of that, of the first example. So that just continues. So I did try to sort of um, use images and, and uh, evocative statements to motivate people. I mean, that's a little part It's like writing in three dimensions. Yeah. But actually, going back to the process of making some of these, yeah. because if you've gone right away from your purest ceramicist. Oh, yeah. Well, I did that a lot. <laughs> and you've used found materials, yeah. all kinds of stuff that would have been anathema to the product of, of yesterday. Yeah. So yeah. talk about some of these works and, and how you found objects, what they yeah. suggest to you, etc. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a, just a thing that is an ongoing way of the way you see art. It's mm-hmm. always look at things and, and, and see things initially as interesting and then as a means to an end. Um, Bichamp is probably one of my great teachers because when I first saw it, it's your idol. And I thought, how audacious can you take that thing? You take something that's very mundane and probably a little bit, you know, mm-hmm. off the edge. Mm-hmm. This is back in the 20s, well, 100 years ago. Yeah. And you stick it in the gallery because he hated galleries, he hated the superficiality of the intellectualism of the galleries. To do this, and then a bicycle work, to make it into a precious body. So that is the essence of what this work is about. You take something that's very ordinary, um, like a little doorknob, oh. and you make that into a precious That's a doorknob. Well, it's, oh. a, it's actually, no, it's not a doorknob, it's the end of a. Uh, um, I think you know you put the things in the yeah, yeah. Well, that's what they are. Uh, oh, and you yeah. make, you transfer them. Now, what happens is this to it? Um, often, something that's precious, like in the hat there, like that figure, that's gold buster. So yeah. it's 22 carat gold. Uh-huh. And you just then use silver polish and gold polish. One thing picks up on the other, so you can see that's the relationship. One of the relationships. It's that one thing. Dominates and the other thing is taken the same of <coughs> So the same as the head behind you. Yeah. See that happening here? The little the figure, which is it's a tongue cheek of on hands, is actually gold luster. But the duck is a little plastic, in the, a little uh, ceramic duck. Right. And that's what gold polish on. See, one thing takes on the same of the other. So it all looks like it's the same thing. But it's same down here is it's gold lust all over the piece down there and the rest of it's just bone polish. Yeah. Same thing here. There's no, there's only a bit of gold lust in here and on that little thing there. The rest of it's just polish, but they tag on the persona of the yeah. other. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. That's, that's how it sort of happens. I think it's, 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 it takes a long time to get that kind of relationship. Yeah. It's just that I got fed up, George, with making ceramic things. And then somebody would break it. Because it's all ceramic. And it does, if you drop ceramic, they have done things. But if you drop some of these, they still break. It. But if you do it, you don't know. Yeah. So 
And that's another thing, and I mean, he shocked me that. He used all that sort of stuff. The other thing is Picasso has got a uh, uh, glass of absinthe. You know, that three litre yeah. spade, we've got it with the, the ex uh, cake spice on it. And it's just a, a, a glass full of plastic. Yeah. 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 You know, I thought that's good. Yeah. That's good. So, so Picasso, the way he saw things and was able to move things around, I first saw his work when I was a student in tech, uh, back in the 60s. We went down to the local Regents Theatre, we had staff put us down, and there was Picasso painting. He was painting on the glass, so you see the painting. Then he went to the pottery, and something that probably made these beautiful plants. And he was actually drawing on them. So, so that's where I started drawing. Yeah. Oh, and then you started working with Earl Barnes? Well, we had a partnership there. Okay. Yeah, I was down the city painting. He rang me one day and he said, uh, we need to go into business. I think I made $200 that year. We had six shows. And uh, all over Queensland. We sold everything. But, yeah. So I grew up in the deep woods where everything was used and reused and recycled. I guess that's been an influence too, because I'd pick up a lot of shit. Yeah, well, it's something the world could learn from now, I think. <laughs> More recycling. Yeah, well, well, they, they just, nothing will ask them. It's just mm. two or three years, you get a new washing machine, a new fridge, a new start at all, a new car. Good. Now, you've got sort of conceptual themes and you've got yeah. response to materials. But also I see biographical touches, particularly in titles and stuff. Talk about some of the events that sort of spur you to perhaps complete work. Well, but over here, uh, later I lived with the five years, Ruth Stanley, who yep. came as a textile lady. Uh, yep. we, we, we had a relationship for several years. And one Easter, there was no one to Russell Oldham, mm -hmm. but he in, in uh, Jeff Shaw's place. Yeah. The place out there, so we had, had a reason, right? So uh, the second day we were there, we were fishing. She'd never been fishing on that before. And we were fishing on the, on the channel side in about two foot of water. And I threw the surf on it. As far as I was far, with half a foot of And we were still in that much water. And I'm walking back, I go over the rod, and she said, I've got a bite. I said, don't be silly. She said, what do I want to do? I said, wind it in. So after about 10 minutes, she went with me, and she had a big an arcade gold and true about <laughs> But see where the gold with the money is positioned near, near where the vagina is. It's also a symbol oh, yeah, yeah. of the beauty of a woman. Yeah. And then there's a little emblem down there and then there's me fishing in the world with the fishing rod, which is a ring. And we were engaged. And we were going to be married and then life happened so we didn't do that. Um, we always remained friends. Um, and I watched this for a real and then she was in recovery and then she went up again and then she passed away mm -hmm. at a very young age, in 63. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, she'll always be a part of mine. She's a lovely lady and uh, a great sense of humour. Yeah, I remember her quilts. Yeah, quilts are beautiful. Mm -hmm. yes. So there, there's things, most, most of the things I make have to do with experience. It's like this piece here. I lost a child, has to do with, with the child's death. Whether it's a soldier, like a child of war, uh, we had two stillborn children in our early parents. And the things, you know, they were never forget. So, mm. this, I didn't, when I made this, it wasn't with that in mind. Mm. But then yeah. this thing happened, and I realised what it was yeah. only a few years ago. Yeah. I don't always know. Yeah. And I don't think it's uncommon, by the way. I think that's yeah. probably fairly common to us. Uh, generally, I start off with a series, I do do the drawings a little. Yeah. And then I move through that, and I do either uh, make all the 3D things, I can do boards, and I go into the 2D things, so they, they help each other. That's why, you know, mm -hmm. they are related. Did you ever exhibit your preparatory drawings? I, well, years ago, I did, when I first started the show, um, I did. But after that, they just became sketches. They're, they're yeah. just, they're not, they're not, they're just very small thumbnail sketches. And I don't bother, if I elaborate them in the drawings, I wouldn't make them. They'd be done in the show. So I just have the little motivation. I never look at a drawing. Because I always think of David Paulson. 
His preparatory drawings are the drawings he does in the life past shows him are better than what he does for exhibition. Because you'll do them on the edits, yes, George. Yeah. I've always found that I never take a drawing down into the studio. Yeah. Um, because I lose it. I've got to take the memory of this one there. It's the only way I can move it. I mean, years ago I tried putting a, a drawing up and it doesn't work. It's got to be a new thing. Yeah. And, and sometimes it will change radically from where I start. Sometimes the drawing will get lost in French translation or whatever, in translation. But um, as long as they work, I mean, you know when they work, it's a funny thing, I don't know what they have to work, not so much the paintings, but I don't never know if they work until they're framed. Sometimes they don't. Mm. But these, when they feel right, yeah. when I pick them up and they feel right, I don't know. I don't know what that means because they're all different weights, but when it feels well in my hands, I know it's quite nice. So that's all I can tell otherwise. Visually, yeah. Now, yeah. um, there's a, sort of several tactics and technical strategies you employ within those. There's planetoid shapes, sort of mirrors, uh, the use of sort of pedestals. Talk, yeah. talk about those. Yeah, they work for you. Well, I, I, think, I think the idea of the mirror is something that I came up with oh, back in 2008, I think. And uh, it was just that people looked at the thing, mm. but then you didn't see what was happening underneath. And I like underneath. And underneath is, you know, it's a part of sweetness, I think. So that's where the mirrors came from. And I like the reverse reflection of the thing. Mm. It just gives it a different uh, dimension. So they shift about to keep clean because you clean them and then you put them in the studio next day. And, and, and of course, you know, insects and geckos, drop them things, and, and then you clean a piece of glass. Glass is the hardest thing to clean. The only way to clean it is with, with newspaper and methane mm. yes, and water. Mm. I'll clean it up to come back to it. It works better than anything. It just it, it evaporates, it doesn't. Mm. I agree. Yeah, so, and, and these support the cylinders, and that came out of a show in 2011. And I had a number of small sculptures inside, I so they were framed. But unfortunately, because they were encapsulated, you couldn't see them properly. So, so, so people just didn't, didn't really pop onto that. And I thought, I've spent $900 to buy all these bloody things. I'm going to do it. And as you do, I was mucking around one day and uh, I stuck a piece on top of the cylinder. And she never looks as though it's floating. But... So uh, I'll keep that idea and see if anybody else repeats it. But it just gives you that feeling of, like, saving it. It just gives you that way of looking like, yeah. this, that's why that's there. It wouldn't have the same impact if it was just sitting on there. No, no, no. And of course, that had made purpose things. I stopped them with everyone, but, but with most of them there was a very different one over there behind Alex. That's got an image of these which is reflected in there. Mm. Uh, so it just means people have got to look closely. When they look closely to us, they look a bit more intimately, I think, rather than just saying, you know, so yeah. there, there's that reason. Well, uh, this, that's what they invite. I mean, once they really catch your eye, you can't get away from it. Yeah. Sort of a baroque multitude of forms and stuff like yeah, this. Yeah. Um, well, that's the reason. Mm-hmm. And, and these little bases, um, like they have uh, stainless steel serving dishes, and um, these things here, so you just put a bit of that around them, and uh, they're much cheaper than. And they're much more, they're part of the work anyway, yeah. but they just give it that, that different sort of look. Image to just sit his flat on I, I, I don't like things to be flat. I've always had sculptures that sit flat. I like them to be up, turn around, I don't know, just be. Uh, same reason that Doric columns have the middle of the room. I suppose so, yeah. I, I, I just like that. It, yeah. The beginning, the middle, and the end, I like what that's like. I'd rather than the middle and the end, I like the, the, whole, the whole thing. So. And when you put a frame around a painting, you know, yeah. and, uh, the same sort of thing, yeah. and they seem to float, although they're sitting on the thing. And, and there's a nice ambiguity then, because they're neither a, a trophy or a monument, or 
They're more ambiguous for them. Yeah, well, they're more like they're, they're a three dimensional painting. Yeah. And, and um, initially they were, they were fairly colourful. You know, I was just doing some of this. But now there's a meeting different materials. So they're still suddenly colourful too. Oh, but there's a lot of colour inside there. Oh, yeah. There's layers yeah. underneath where that surface is, there's probably four or five layers. You start with a warm pigment. I mean, these are fired anyway, these are fired. Um, that's so made it's, it's like a glaze process, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, uh, you know, I, I can't see the reason. I mean, Picasso had people throw stuff. Bill Robinson had people throw stuff. I had the idea of throwing stuff from me way back in the 60s. Mm. And I decorated it. And so it's not a new thing, you know. And then before that, Picasso did it, Bourne did it. Mm. You know, so it's not a new process, it's just, it's just something that uh, if these ready mates you just paint on them like the years, they'll paint or paint or whatever, it doesn't matter. Mm. As long as it works as part of the image, uh, it's as permanent as, as a paint. Mm. Yeah, so you know, it's all part of the past of that, but you just use whatever, and that's the nice thing, is, is to find something that fits into something that you didn't know when you got it. So I've got these boxes and shit all over the place, mm. which, which won't be there forever, but um, they'll probably become this complicated to do it because I'll never do this again. Mm. Um, these took four years, five years to make, as you can see. I don't use the blue gun anymore, I don't use. I still have cans of beer, there's a can over there mm. from the old one. Um, but they'll become simpler as you get older. It happens. I've, I've noticed this in artists' work. The car that we started was making selfies, self portraits and, and etching. Mm. And he started way back in the yeah. 1890s or something. That's really what they've done. And I know it's a lot of artists, they, they end where they start, they you know, sort of go back. So I made fairly simple things when I, when I started, because I didn't know. So I guess I'm going to do the same thing. Oh. I know they're going to be simple, the next day's going to be much simple. Mm. Well, we might hit about there as well. Uh, yeah. Have you got any last minute wisdom to <laughs> Well, uh, um, all my bottles still available. <laughs> <laughs> my kids, my kids are beat on the door, and uh, uh, fortunately now they've grown up, and the kids have grown up a bit. When I, not years ago, I, I didn't paint painted things on the wall, but they wouldn't take three days up because the kids run up to me, unfortunately. But now there's you know, three, four households that I can. I've loaded stuff in there because there's not a lot of room in my place. The stuff I made is not really, uh, um, I say, it's not a commercial thing, it's, it's very personal. It's like, you know, autobiography yeah. every three years, the same thing as one. So the next show is, um, it's called Talking Heads. Okay. Yeah, and it's just about me or talk. I mean, you'll probably be in the next show. Oh, right. Alex, I'll be in there with this. I mean, it's just a thing that I've thought about, and of course, that's very, very well known, very tall years. I love the work, so um, can be fused back in Destiny shows. Mm -hmm. So it would be maybe much smaller, uh, because I'll be crying, but they'll go back to where I started, but you know, that's just the way it's going to There's one more show that's left of this kind of medium expedient. Mm -hmm. It's very big, and it's called the Ten Apostles. It's the people I've never seen here, it's all the artists that influenced me from yeah. Duchamp to Picasso to Van Gogh. I've made two things of it. But it's all pretty, like something's very, very large. The Goya piece uh, is the disasters of war. It's a very famous one. So uh, I'm, I'm not going to have it after this one because it's still in there. So I'll have a little, a little mm -hmm. interim, interim period of that yeah. uh, A bit of fun and then uh, one more after that.